example, we're going to use supply and demand formulas to calculate the ideal market price, to calculate consumer surplus and producer surplus. Um, and then we're going to add taxes and see what happens to surplus, and we'll be able to calculate the actual deadweight loss that results from an increase in taxes. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. We're going to start off with just two formulas. And based on these two formulas, we should be able to calculate everything else we need to find. So the formulas we're going to be looking at um, for supply, if we're going to say supply, the formula we care about here is P equals 2 plus 0 0.25 Q. And again, in economics, P is Y and Q is X. So we can technically plot this in Desmos and we'll be able to see um, how this supply curve goes up. Then we also have a demand curve which we'll use with purple. So demand is going to be P equals 20 minus 0 0.5 Q. So there's our demand. So just based on these two formulas, we should be able to figure out everything else. So we're going to start, the very first thing we're going to do is just stick this in Desmos, and that will actually show us the answer of where they cross. We could um, do the actual algebra here. Um, which would involve saying like 2 plus 0 0.25 Q equals 20 minus 0 0.5 Q. And then you do all sorts of algebra, 0 0.5, add 0 0.5, minus 2, minus 2. And so you get like 0 0.75 Q equals 2018. Um, you can do all sorts of algebra to figure out what Q is. And then you have to plug that Q in to figure out P. And that's a hassle. We don't actually want to do that. Um, Desmos makes it so that we don't need to do that. So let's switch over to Desmos and plug these two different equations in. So our supply was, so we say y equals 2 plus 0 0.25x. There's our supply line. It goes up. Um, then the demand was y equals 20 minus 0 0.5x. And there's our demand curve. It goes down. And somewhere in the middle here, they cross. And wherever they cross is the ideal market price. Um, and using Desmos, we can actually just click there. And it shows that um, the prevailing market price is going to be $8. And there will be 24 um, units of whatever this thing is. We'll pretend it's books. So 24 books will be sold, and they will be sold for $8. That is the best price that exists in the world, given supply and demand. Great. Um, so next, what we can do is calculate the producer surplus and the consumer surplus that people get from selling and from buying books. Um, so to do that, we need to do a little bit of geometry. And one thing I like to do, um, especially when like, so Desmos right here is like this, this triangle area is fairly big and we can see the different numbers and stuff, but sometimes you might get a, a line that is fairly flat and it's going to be hard to see the actual slivers of the triangles that you care about. So what I like to do is I like to just draw a generic plot um, that doesn't actually have the right shapes or anything. It's just showing um, kind of where all of the different things we care about are. So to do that, we're just going to make a plot here. Um, actually, we will use not that color because we care about supply and demand here so we'll just have it be black so here is our graph we're going to make a supply line that just looks like that again that's not at all the right slope but that doesn't matter we're just doing this um, as kind of a shortcut to see all the different moving parts here and then here's our demand curve it goes down like that and let's actually extend that all the way okay so the reason we did that is because now we have a price that is the ideal quantity. Um, what we do in economics is we just call that Q star. Um, it stands for ideal. And then right here, if we draw a dotted line all the way to the edge here, we have P star, which means the ideal price. Okay, so to figure out consumer surplus, the consumer surplus is this area right here, that triangle. And what that really means is that somebody at this point was willing to pay a ton of money for the product, but they didn't have to. They had to pay a far lower price. And so they get all sorts of bonus points right here. That's kind of the surplus they get. That's the good deal that they get. They're willing to pay a whole bunch, but they don't have to pay that much. Um, the same is true for uh, producer surplus on the other side. 
the seller is willing to pay or willing to sell a book for really cheap. But they don't have to because the price is much higher. And so they get all of this benefit. They're happy um, by however big that amount is. That's the good deal points they get. And so if we calculate all of the good deal points here in this section, um, if we figure out the area of that triangle, that's going to be our consumer surplus. And if we figure out the area of this triangle here, that's going to be our producer surplus. Okay, so to figure that out, we need to do a little bit of um, geometry to do this. So this Q star, we have an actual number for it. If you recall in Desmos, that showed that this, the ideal quantity was 24 and the ideal price was 8. The intercept here is 20, and then this is down at zero. So those are our actual numbers. So based on these numbers, we can start calculating areas. So for this triangle here, that's what we're gonna do first. The area is equal to 1 half base times height. So we need to figure out the base of the triangle and the height of the triangle. The base of the triangle is this line right here. So it goes from zero to 24. So that is our base. So we know that is now area equals 1 half times 24. And then the height of the triangle is this section right here, going from 20 down to whatever the ideal price was, which was 8. So between 20 and 8, you have 12 numbers. So the area there, or the height is 12. So we have 1 half times 24 times 12. 1 half times 24 is 12. So we have 12 times 12. So the area here is 144. So in this situation, producer surplus equals $144. Those are the total good, the good value points, the good deal points that people get from this. Then we can figure out, um, con or that's not producers, consumer surplus. Then we can figure out producer surplus using the same uh, process. So we care about the area of this triangle here. So the formula again is one half base times height. So we want one half. The base here is this section. So it goes from zero to 24, so 24. The height goes from zero to eight. So the height is eight. So one half times 24 is 12. So whatever 12 times eight is, um, 12 times eight is 96. So producers get bonus points in total of 96. Um, so there we go. We figured out the ideal um, quantity, the ideal price. We figured out producer surplus, and we figured out consumer surplus. Um, in this situation, just given how, how the slopes are arranged, um, it's a better deal for consumers. They get more surplus um, from this. They get a better, uh, more good deal points than the producers. Um, but that's just because of how the, the slopes are. Um, if one of the slopes is steeper or shallower, then it actually changes the size of those triangles. Um, and so it, it depends on how those are distributed. I actually just realized that I made a mistake when we did this. Um, and it's because of this fake graph that I had. So if we go back to the real graph, um, notice how the supply line doesn't start at zero, it starts at um, two instead of zero. And so when we figured out producer surplus in um, the previous video here, what we did is we said that um, the height of this triangle, this is the triangle we care about, we said the height goes from eight to zero, which is, which is how I calculated it in the previous video. But that's not actually right. Um, it's not zero, it's two is where that starts. So the height is not eight, the height goes from eight to two, which is six. So the area of producer surplus is one half base, which was um, from zero to 24. So 24 times six, not times eight, um, because that's the actual height right here, is this six, it doesn't go down to zero. So what we have is 12 times six. So 12 times six is 72, which is not 96. So let's erase that and add 72. So um, it's lower than we had before. It's still, the proportions are still right. Like consumers get a bigger surplus than the, than the producers um, just because of how the slopes are. And so that, that's fine. But that's the actual producer surplus and consumer surplus, not what I did previously. Okay, so now we're going to change our supply line to account for a new tax. 
We're going to pretend that the government imposes a tax of $5 on all of the books that this, this company is selling. So what that does to the actual equation is it boosts up that whole line. Right now it is, is going up like this. We're going to move it up $5. So to do that, we just have to adjust the intercept. So right now the intercept um, is 2. It starts at 2 and then goes up. So what we end up with, supply given a tax, we're going to have P equals 7 plus 0.25Q. If we draw it here, um, we're going to have a graph that looks something like this. So we're going to have a new, so that's going to start at 7 now. We're going to have a new equilibrium, a new price, and a new quantity. Um, we could use algebra to set these two equations equal to each other and figure out what Q is, and then plug that in and figure out what P is. Or we can just use Desmos because that's faster. So if we come back to our graph in Desmos, we're going to add a new supply line, so that's going to be y equals 7 plus 0.25x, and that is our new um, supply given the tax that exists in the world. So before, our ideal quantity was 24 with a price of 8. Now, our ideal quantity is 17 and a third with a price of $11.33. So things are more expensive, and there are fewer things out in the world um, as a result of this tax. And so that creates some inefficiency. There are people um, who used to be willing to pay like $10 that can no longer buy a book anymore. Um, there are people who are willing to pay $9 who cannot buy a book anymore. Um, if you were willing to pay like $15, you can still buy a book, and you're still getting surplus, and you're still kind of happy about it. Um, but you're less happy than you were back before the tax was there. So that is, that is the actual um, answer here if we're trying to figure out how the price changes because of um, this tax. Um, the price went from 8 to 11.33. The quantity went from 24 to 17.33. Um, but we can also figure out the changes in surplus. Um, the consumer surplus and the producer surplus have both shrunk now because of this um, tax. And the government is picking up some of that revenue. Um, they're bringing that, that revenue in, that surplus is, is transferring from producers and consumers to the government. So we can figure out the actual amounts of that um, using our triangles and the different rectangles and stuff that we can draw. So if we switch back to our page here, um, this is what we have. Um, so here's, this is the original supply, this is the supply with tax. So um, it is now more expensive. We know the actual number for this new quantity here. This quantity, let's call this quantity tax. That was, if I look at back at Desmos here, 17.33. And we know the new price. So the price given a tax is, um, was 11.33. 11.33. So the way we calculate our new surpluses is we need to draw a couple additional lines here. So we have this line. So this area is going to be our consumer surplus. If we draw this line straight down to meet the original supply curve and then draw it out like this, um, this is going to be our producer surplus. That's the extra bonus points they're getting now. This triangle right here is our dead weight loss. That is the loss of efficiency in the market because of the tax. These are people who cannot spend money anymore to buy the books, which means the government is not getting any tax revenues from them, and the producers aren't getting any revenue from them. Um, so that's just kind of like a hole in the market that we've added because of the tax. Um, so nobody can buy or sell or do anything in that world right there. Then this rectangle right here, this area, that is what the government brings in. It's the, the surplus that they're transferring from producers down here and consumers up here going to um, the government itself. So we can calculate all of these things now using geometry. So what we care about are the following things. We want to find consumer surplus. We want to find producer surplus. We want to find um, deadweight loss. And we want to find um, tax revenue. And we can actually find the incidence of this. We can figure out how much revenue is coming from consumers 
and how much revenue is coming from producers. So we'll say tax from consumers and tax from producers. So we should be able to figure out all of this um, using geometry and math. So let's figure out consumer surplus first. So that is, um, if we come back to here, that is this triangle right here. That's the one we care about for consumer surplus. So the formula is 1 half base times height. The base here goes from 0 to 17.33. So it's 1 half times 17.33. And then the height goes from 11.33 up to 20. So that height is like 8.66. So if we calculate 1 half times 17.333, times 8.66666, use a calculator to do that because good luck doing that in your head. The actual amount is $75.11, um, which is a big drop from what we had before. Before the tax, we were at $144. Um, we were at $144. Now we're down to $75 in surplus. So that tax ate up a whole bunch of our, our good deal points. That's gone now. Um, for producer surplus, we want to find this triangle right here. So we do the same formula for an equation or for the area of a triangle. So it's going to be 1 half. The base is 17 because we're going from here to there. So it's 17.333 times the height, which is um, right here going from 2 to this point right here. And so that height is 4.333. So if we do the math for that, we say 1 half times 17.33333 times 4.33333, we end up with 37.56, which again is a big chunk of missing um, surplus. It used to be 72, now it is 37. Um, we lost a whole bunch of efficiency because of this tax. Okay. Next thing we want to find is dead weight loss, which is this triangle right here. So we're going to do the same formula for area. So 1 half base times height. The, so the base goes from 24 to 17.333. And so that distance is 6.6667. And then the height is going to go from this point here to this point here. Um, and that height is 4.3333. Um, just kidding, it's not 4.33, it's 5. Um, so that is the distance we have there. I'm um, going from 11.33 down to 6.333. Um, so we say 1 half times 6.6666 times 5. If we do the math for that, the actual area of that rectangle, or, or that triangle, is 16.67. So that means 16, basically $17 of value are just disappearing in this market because of this tax, um, where people can't raise those revenues, the government can't raise the revenues, people can't spend that money, and um, companies can't bring that money in. And so that's just all lost. Um, and so that is the deadweight loss. Tax revenue, we can figure out um, by doing the same geometry here. So let's, let's erase some of this because this is getting kind of messy, or we won't erase it, we'll just make it bigger. So the rectangle we care about here is this guy here. Okay, so that is what the government is bringing in. And we can figure out the area of this rectangle um, by just doing our um, geometry again. So we want to figure out um, the area of this rectangle. To make it easier, we're just going to do the the consumer rectangle, which is this top part, and then we're going to figure out the producer rectangle, which is that bottom part, and then we'll add them together to figure out the total tax revenue. So we'll do the producer one first. So the height of this um, rectangle here, because the area for a rectangle is base times height or length times width. So the area here, um, the width is going to go from 0 to 17.33. So we're going to say 17. Let's this down. 17.333 times um, the height of this thing goes from 11.33 to 8. That's the height of this rectangle that we care about. 
So whatever 11.33 minus 8 is, um, so times 11.333 minus 8, if you type that into a calculator, you end up with um, 57, so we'll put this here, 57.78. So that means the government is bringing in um, almost $58 from consumers. That's how much they're raising from consumers themselves. Um, from producers, we can figure out the area of this rectangle. So that's going to also be 17.333, but the distance now is 8 to 6.33. So it's 8 minus 6.3333. If you put that into a calculator, you end up with $28.89. Um, so producers are, are also paying some of this tax, but it's not as much as the consumers. It looks like the burden is heavier on consumers. Um, this rectangle here, the way it's drawn here looks a little bit bigger or roughly the same, um, but in the actual graph, um, if we added all of these horizontal and vertical lines in Desmos, you'd be able to see that the producer surplus is kind of a smaller rectangle, the consumer surplus is a bigger rectangle. Um, the total tax revenue is the sum of these things here, um, which is going to be 86.67, but it's not equally borne by both parties. We can actually calculate the percent that is borne by different parties. So consumers are bearing 57.78 divided by 86.67. That is 66% of the tax burden is borne by the consumers. Um, which means that the producers are bearing 33% of the tax burden. So in this situation, the tax actually hurts consumers more than producers. Um, so given just these three formulas, what we just did, um, here's our three formulas that we had, which really just supply and demand, the, the two, and then we added the tax. We were able to figure out the original surplus, the original, the original surplus for consumers and producers, the ideal price and quantity, and then the new price and quantity after a tax, how much the um, producer surplus and consumer surplus changed, how much revenue the government is bringing in, who's bearing that revenue, and the deadweight loss that comes from that. Um, and we were able to do all of that with just a few uh, math equations and some geometry. Um, a more annotated version of this um, with step-by-step -step instructions of how to calculate all of these things is on this resources page. So go ahead and check that out for future reference and good luck with your problem sets in your exam.